It's a cold day in New York, that's for sure. What's going on guys? Big VP back, one of the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I present to you the eBay special. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright guys, you know the joke, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You got the Instagram stories, is the most popular thing. That is what I'm always on. I'm in the garage, I'll whip out my phone. It's always Instagram stories, so be sure to follow Instagram, that's probably number one, and also YouTube, those are the high number ones and twos. Then you got Facebook and TikTok, you got the link tree, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me on all the socials, because you could see like the daily life, my daily life, whether it's with my wife and my kid, and you know, whether it's me building and little funny stuff, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me on all the socials. But on this one today, we're going to be looking at the eBay special. Before I go in depth on this, um, you know, the customer does follow me on all the socials, so I appreciate it. That's how we got in contact, and this is how we came to this point. I just want to make this very clear in this video, and I'm doing this because a lot of people like my attitude towards this thing. I, I get these, you know, in the emails, people are like, Vic, I don't get attitude, man. You got a no bullshit, no, you don't give a shit kind of, you know, I just speak. And that's what I like to do, especially when it's my platform and my, you know, channel. I could do whatever I want. I just want to make sure that the customer knows that number one, I am not intending to make fun of you. I'm not trying to disrespect you at all. It's just, I make this video so people can see all the scenarios that happen on a daily for me, because it might be their scenario as well. So again, I appreciate the follow. I appreciate the business to it, but I will be talking about our entire journey together. And again, please uh, just don't think of it as me bashing you. I'm not making fun of you. I'm not here to disrespect you. It's just, I like to, tell everybody all the viewers that what you experience or what happened to you it happens to a lot of people and you know i'm not gonna say always choose me but uh i'm always there to help that's probably the best, biggest thing but with my help it comes a fee so just keep that in mind let's go over some basics let's talk about the background to it and then we'll talk about this exact cabinet so I'm going to do like a little bit of a background story on this. Before I make it, I'm going to go off script on this because I just want to make it clear because I'm very grateful, I'm very happy people are shooting me emails and again, I am a one-man team. I'm a one-man army. I will never have a helper. I will never have a worker. Um, I rather do quality over quantity. I do get the email a lot and I'm very grateful because this comes up now, especially now that I have a wait list and I'm proud to say that I have a wait list. Right behind me you can see I have two of three V-pins. That's the next big project coming up for me. I have V-pins coming up. You don't see it there, but I have a Mega Touch and I have a vertical cabinet coming up. I'm right now enjoying it. Like I'm, I'm gonna kick out of everything. This to me is a hobby first and then a business second. If I don't like the hobby, I'm out. You know what I mean? So I kind of get annoyed when people, you know, message me. They go, "Hey, Vic, man, you know, I want to build." And then I tell them, like, you know, I have a wait list. You have to wait. They're like, "Oh, Vic, I want it now." You know what? I'm out. Like, forget it. Why don't you get help? You could be banging out 50 cabinets in a month if you get some help. I don't do that. That's not my objective. That is not what I'm doing this for. I'm doing this purely out of pleasure. I love what I do. And I like it when people email me like, hey, big man, I see your passion. I get that. That's what I like. But I'm just letting you know, I am a one-man army till the end of this. I, I can't have somebody help me. Um, I can't count on somebody to wire up a cabinet and then send it out to you and then hey Vic there's an issue I, I can't I won't sleep at night so I am proud to say I'm a one-man army I have a wait list if you are down to wait on the wait list I'm appreciative and great if not it is a-okay I'm just happy that you're watching me and enjoying the time and all that so just keep that in mind so again off script I'm just appreciating you you know watching it it's just, I had somebody email me and you know the one thing I hate in the emails and people are like, Vic, you gotta get help, man. You could be making way more money. I don't, don't, don't worry about me. That's what I tell them, don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. As long as I have a smile on my face and I'm able to do what I love, money isn't everything. It's not what I'm doing this for. So please, that's like the one thing I hate. When somebody goes, you could be making more money. Why don't you get help? I don't, don't, don't. End of rant, done. Next, let's talk about this cabinet here. So this customer actually messaged me from what I remember a while back because it went from like Instagram to Facebook Marketplace. 
Um, you know, he mentioned a while back he did want a bar top. And I gave him the basics, we went over everything, I gave him the pricing, and that's the thing. Hey, big man, your pricing is way too high, forget it. Time goes by, I would say about a month or two later, he hits me up and goes, hey, big man, I got this bar top. I have an issue with it. It's not powering on. Can you help me out? I'm always down to help. I, I, I kind of like that. In this situation, you can see seller sold him something. He has an issue and where are you at? That's what I get a lot of and I'm happy that people see that in the video. So, um, you know, that's the background to this. He went with somebody else and apparently when he dropped it off to me, he did tell me, you know, hey, Vic, man, I spent X amount. I, I don't really want to say the, the number because he might be watching. It's like, I didn't say the number. I remember him saying he spent 400 bucks on this from eBay. He said, I got this from eBay, I paid 400 bucks and it worked. But now it doesn't. This is running on Raspberry Pi. I believe it's running like a 19 inch screen. I didn't even measure the screen out. Um, but basically he dropped it off and you know, the big thing that people don't understand is that in these situations, there's a lot going on. He originally was like, hey big man, I just need an SD card because my Pi doesn't work. Like I could see like the screen turn on, but nothing else is on. I just think it's the SD card. I, I think that's the issue. That's all I need. And I tell him all the time, it's, you know, you're, you're, you have the mentality of it's plug and play. He was like, Vic, it worked before. So it should work again if you just give me an SD card. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, people go on arcade punks and they download the image and they think that, hey, I'm trying to pop it in and game on. There is configuring to do. So he goes, yeah, but Vic, you know, I got like the joysticks. I didn't really mention, but we were negotiating now the price, my fee to fix this now. And I gave him a number and he wasn't too happy with it. And I said, you know, he had the mentality of, it worked before, I just need an SD card and call it a day. I'm like, no man, it doesn't work that way. There is configuring to do. You have to configure the SD card. You have to go into the emulator, you have to do all that. But Vic, man, it worked before. I said, I understand it works before, but it's not that easy. Then also what people don't understand is that I didn't build this. The encoders, and it happened in this build, did the builder like wire it correctly? What does that mean? Uh, you might say, what does that mean, Vic? What do you mean? What? Usually encoders should be wired in sync. If button one is one on the encoder board, it should also be for player two. It just makes life easier that way. And sure enough, on this build, it wasn't wired in sync. Player, the, the top six buttons on player one was one through six. The player two side was just a scrambled mess. It was like eight to 13. And I'm like, that's the thing that people don't see. And it's A-OK, -okay. I understand it. People will forever just think it's easy and I get it, but I'm just making these videos so people could watch it and understand that it is just, it's just not easy. So again, I right now I'm taking another builder's stuff and I have to work on it. Obviously, as you can see, and you can tell from my, my expression and everything, Player two wasn't wired and sync. Not to mention whoever built this cabinet, please do not proceed in this profession. This cabinet is stapled together. It is stapled. If this customer has to change the joystick, it's not happening. The only way he's gonna be able to change the joystick is he's gonna have to turn this upside down and take a scroll, like a saw, He's gonna have to take a saw and cut the bottom out. This is entirely stay. I cannot lift the control panel. The back rear panel is the only thing that opens. I'll take it in closer. I, I thought I could put my hand in and kind of, I couldn't do it. So I actually had to end this builder, glued the encoders to the control panel. So I luckily was able to get a screwdriver out. I popped it off. It took a while to get it out, but I popped it off. There's work to be done. So again, even though another builder did it, he didn't do it how I do it. Is my way the only way? No, but I had to rewire it. You're back to square one, <laughs> you know what I mean? So going back to what I'm getting at, you know, we were negotiating on a price and really it's very difficult to even price this out. I didn't really feel comfortable giving him a price because I'm the type of person I think worst case scenario. You think it's just the Pi and the SD card. You think it's just the SD. What if it's more than that? What if your Pi shorted, fried the USBs, and now your encoders are fried? You know, what if it's also like, hey, the TV is just dead. Now you need a new TV. What if it's like the power strip and you need a new power? Like, what if it's a speed? Like, that's what I'm getting at. It's very difficult to even name a price. I just need it in my hands. 
and I could kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, but we were going back and forth. We finally agreed on a number and I said to him, listen, I'm going to give you a number if I just, you know, fix the pie, I'll bring it back together. But if I have to rewire this, there's going to be an extra fee to it. That's more time. It's got stuff to do. So we agreed on it. As it came in, that's when everything, I started to discover everything. So luckily he had an extra brother cry lying around. This is what I believe happened. Um, I'm pretty sure that the one day he just, you know, unplugged the bar top. He didn't shut down the pie properly. Uh, and basically when he went to go plug it in again, it was dead. And now you just have a very big paperweight. So I'm pretty, I'm very sure that's what happened. Uh, he probably took the SD card out. And when he put the SD card back in, he probably put it in like, the wrong way and went vertical and popped out the actual SD card holder here. So luckily he had an extra pie because if I had to get a pie, the pies are expensive now. Uh, but yeah, that's what I believe. This is the old Raspberry Pi. I'll probably show you a, a real quick thing here of the actual um, SD card holder. Uh, I've never seen that ripped out like that, but damn. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about like the cabinet itself because like I said earlier, you know, whoever built this cabinet um, I don't, I hope you don't proceed, uh, you know, don't take it bad, but this is just, I, I ca this cabinet is stapled together. If the customer ever needs to swap out, and honestly, player one's joystick, it's not the same feeling as player two, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even entertain it. This is stapled together, there's no way to access the control panel, it's stapled together. It looks like he's he's using birch. I thought it was plywood, but now that I look closely, it is actually like Home Depot birch. I originally, when I had my CNC, I first tried Home Depot birch and it was a huge nightmare. I'll never do it again. Just the amount of like priming and sanding, priming and sanding, just to make sure it's a smooth finish for you to put artwork on it. I will never use Home Depot birch. I now have my laminated birch. I'd rather spend the extra bucks and get that smooth, finish um but a couple of things the customer says to me hey big man i like your leds so i tried and attempted to do some led stuff so i did clean up his led that he had here um he just had excess led uh i cleaned it up i normally don't do this he does have little foot so it kind of works out um but the big thing is kind of difficult to even understand or see when you try to put these led strips or anything like even a sticker even vinyl if you try to put that on like bare wood like this, it ain't gonna stick. So I did have to put a couple of dabs of hot glue to make sure that this LED strip does stay. So I cleaned that up there. Um, it's just kind of crazy how the builder did it. If you look at the rear of the cabinet, uh, again, he's using birch from Home Depot. The top he did fairly nice. It's not primed. It's not, it's not prime sanded prime, it's not, it's, it's just painted as you can see I'm not sure if you can see there where you are but the top panel is a little bit cleaner than the rear the rear you could actually see the wood design but the who cares the rear I know but it's just like you know you went to the to the extent of like spray painting everything green and finish it <laughs> you know what I mean not to mention like the power strip here the cord here it's there's a lot there's, there's a lot going on and again like I said before if the customer has to swap out these joysticks or the buttons, there is no access point to this. It's stapled in together. You're going to have to take a saw and cut this. And then not to mention to put it back, it's never going to go back again. So yeah, that's uh, there you go. Also, he didn't continue the T molding here. He should have done it. You already cut, you know, part of it. I don't know. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot going on. But I mean, all in all, I got it up and running. I did say to him, hey, listen, you know, usually it's four admin buttons. He only has the start and the coin and then one button for exit. Uh, you know, I now have it where it's a, the coin button is the uh, shift key. So I have shift exit. He has load option and save option. Um, you know, there's, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> there's no bezel on the screen. There's nothing protecting the screen. You could see the Samsung logo. It is what it is. Uh, he's got these screws here. I didn't touch the marquee. The customer gave me the, that that screw was out when he gave it to me. But you know, I'm gonna make sure that it looks nice. You can even see like the. Let me bring you closer here. You can see like the control panel is not like cut correctly. Let me fix the camera. I don't know if you can see the difference there on this button here. 
Uh, might as well get a game solutions bar top. Honestly, it probably would have been better and bigger and accessible. <laughs> but all jokes aside and all, you know, talking aside, the cabinet now is back. He is now back to enjoying some classic arcade gaming and such. That is the end goal of this. And that's what makes me happy is that I was able to revive it. Uh, you know, whether people understand how long it takes and all the work it is it is what it is the cabinet now works just take a look at like the rear you can see like the pie is here um i don't even know what's going on here that's like the marquee lighting i don't know if the customer did this i doubt he did it oh he probably actually removed that's probably why the screws are out he probably removed the marquee to run his leds there uh i can see a speaker there anyway you can just see like the rear here the volume control is in the back here um power strip is like dead in the middle uh it is what it is listen i, I got it up and running i'm happy to be uh helpful and give my service to it uh again all joking aside I, it came out great i'm happy that he is able to game on now only big thing i do tell him now is that be sure you got to shut down the Pi correctly. So this does have a track mode on it. You can wake it up after 30 seconds, you go into a track mode and such, and you game on. You could also load and save, you go back on it, you go into arcade gaming, you wanna play some consoles like the NES, the Super NES, you could go ahead and do that. Now again, going back to what I said, he was looking at like PlayStation 1. He's like, Vic, you know, my PlayStation 1 had Tekken and it had uh, something else, I forgot. Does yours? No, mine doesn't. Oh, can you add it? No, the pies to me are done. Like this, I will never add it. Not to mention I am like, I only have like a gig of open space just for the game saves available. So I don't really do much on the pies anymore. And you can see it in my channels. I would rather you get a PC based system. And going back to what I said, you know, PS1, if you want PS2 and it's not gonna play flawlessly with a Raspberry Pi. I don't care what pie you have. You know, N64 is N64, you will forever have the stuttering on it. But all in all, I do always mention, and you can see it in my past Raspberry Pi videos, you just gotta be sure that you shut down the Pi correctly. You exit it, you're gonna see I put a special command inside a track mode, and boom, you are officially powered down. Now, you go ahead and you unplug it. This doesn't have a kind of nice on and off switch, you just gotta pull the, the power give it a couple of seconds and I'll put it back in. Everything luckily does turn on. So he did, the builder did good by using the correct screen and the screen will power on. You can see like the, the Pi is booting up. You gotta do some line of coding to make sure that the Pi is always registering 1080p. Uh, but all in all, it's solid. Listen, it works. It's great. I'm happy to be of service. Uh, it works. It's awesome. Uh, I'm actually gonna take it closer so you can see the staple because I, I was here for like a half hour and I'm like, how is this cabinet built? I'm even like rubbing the sides here. I'm like, maybe there's screws underneath the vinyl. And I was like, no, like this is just, I don't see it. And then finally it hit me. When you look at the rear, I'm gonna show you real quick. When you look at the rear, you can see that right there. Bang, look at that. A nice, beautiful, staple so that's where i was like oh this is stapled together and then as i kind of rub my fingers along the sides you could kind of just feel the little nub of the staple but on that note we got the ebay special back up and running and again the customer is going to enjoy some arcade gaming stay tuned for a lot more there's a lot more videos i got a mega touch i got to talk about that that was a facebook kind of thing going on and then we got a vertical and ah gotta love it Gotta love it. Okay, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you, I almost did it again. I almost took a line out of Retro Ralph. <laughs> game on, my guys, game on.